Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Next program, I don't know how to get this to ring, but anyway, the telephone, it's, it'll, it's the telephone reassurance program and that phone is supposed to ring because I thought it was really cool I was able to do that. Um, <coughs> the telephone reassurance program is yet another program that is free of cost. Um, Pat yeah. is on the program. Um, we have about 12 people that call in every morning. Now what is this program for? This program, uh, we revamped it recently, and this program is a phone call. You call into the station. It's a telephone reassurance. You call into the station if you live alone or you live in a remote area of town or the outskirts of town. It's like if your daughter just doesn't want to talk to you right. anymore. <laughs> you know? If you're someone who doesn't have communication with anyone and you want to be reassured um, that you're okay or whatever it may be, so we have about 12 people that call every morning, and you to call between the hours of 6.30 and 10.30. What if you don't call between those hours to say, hi, how are you doing? My name is Pat. I'm okay. And there may be a discussion, a phone call, or there may be a discussion. Little, little remember, today's, little. today's Halloween. Um, and it's just reassuring for these people that are on it to call into the station to know that there's somebody that does care for them, and then you go about your day. What it's also for is that if you do live alone and you may have a medical condition or not even a medical condition but you live alone, you call into the station. If you fail to call the police station before 10 or 10.30 in the morning, we then, the police department, call you to make sure that you're okay, to make sure that you haven't fallen, to make sure that you're not passed out somewhere. If you don't answer your phone, we then do what's called a well-being check. A well-being check is when we, police officers and or fire department, go to your house, knock on your door to make sure that you're okay. If we don't find you or you don't answer your door, now we have suspicion that there may be something wrong. Sometimes people do forget to call in and they have a doctor's appointment or something, but we do have a method for that. We have a list of people, contacts, because again, it's another application you fill out, and we have a list of contacts that we then call before we try and gain access into your house. We would never just bust your door down. Um, but so, so Sergeant, I'm curious. I know there's, there's one community that, if I recall correctly, it's Westboro, where they actually will, uh, will allow a senior to leave a key at the, at the police station. So that I didn't know if, if you had heard of any such program. I we, was just wondering. There, there are, we don't have keys specifically at the police department. I know that the fire department, I believe, mm -hmm. offers lockboxes. Oh. so that you have a locked box outside of your house and the fire department would then have that key. And I'm not sure specifically on that yep. program, but I know Liz Shannon would be able to or the fire department could speak upon that more. But I know that there are lock boxes that they offer. I'm not sure how much they cost. But it would be set on the side of your house and your key would be in there and it would be locked and only the fire department would have that access. If that's the case, then we would simply call the fire department and say, uh, Pat hasn't answered her phone this morning. We believe she may be hurt inside. Can you let us in? Um, that hasn't happened yet, but um, thank goodness. Um, but hopefully never. Hopefully never. But um, no, it's a great program. The people on it um, really appreciate the fact that they, they know that there's somebody who cares on the other line. Do you want to speak upon it really quick? Well, the only thing is absolutely what he was saying, but the best part for me, I live alone and I had a fall at one time and that made me want to um, have this service. But the best part of it, is if you live alone and you call and every morning and you finally get to know some of the uh, officers, to know that somebody at the other end really cares that you are doing well. Mm -hmm. Every morning they are yeah. actually happy that you are doing well. It is so, it's more than reassuring. It's connecting to somebody other than, uh, you know, who you would see right. going around. It was. I, I think the people who answer, mm -hmm. and I will, I hope this goes back, are magnificent. Yeah. They're so, so they're never like complaining to you? <laughs> never. Like, maybe you're having a great day, but no, I'm having they, a terrible, they are, no, they no. They're just so That's great. wonderful That's that great. They, they really <laughs> care. <laughs> and after, I, I've done it since January, so it's been quite a, quite a year. And I know, and I always call at 6.30 in the morning, and one <laughs> day, the 
an aside, um, they, I didn't call, I was late. I called after 7. And uh, when I finally did call, they said, we were worried about you because you hadn't called at 6.30. Now I have till 10, but yeah. that's, the, that's the kind of care they give you, and I think that's it's great. an excellent program. You know, as well, Pat, um, you're very active, and you, you know, you're out in the well, community. You know my knee, that's why I know all about the knee, yes. but you're a very active member of the community. So I don't have to tell anyone that this is Elephant uh, from the know. visiting nurses. Everybody <laughs> but, knows. You know, that. there are many right. people who are at home who are not so socially engaged right. or active, and or you might have a parent who is resistant to having any sort of um, input from agencies or officers or nurses or whatever. This is a really good way for those people to be connected. Absolutely. It's one more attachment to the caring part of our community, which is, you know, what it's all about. The offices are, in fact, They're are great. very caring. Great. Every one of them that I talk to on the early shift is, oh, that's the night shift. That's right, the night shift. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, it's not only dispatchers, but it's also volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we have a VIPS is the program at the police department, right. and it's volunteers in police there. services. They come in, some of them come in at 8, 8.30. Yeah. So and if dispatch is really busy, they'll be the ones to make the phone calls, and of course they'll have a little bit more time to socialize, which is, it's really the, it's really the key part of the program. It's to socialize, it's to let the people on the other end know that they're not alone, that if they need services, we're here for them. And it's, it's very reassuring, and you just heard it from Pat it. that it is, Love so. It. Great. If you're um, alone, sign up. Yep. <laughs> Um, the, another program that we offer kind of goes along with the telephone reassurance, but it doesn't have a telephone involved. So what it is, is it's a well-being check. And this program has to be initiated from someone. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you have a sibling that lives on the island and you live, say, in South Carolina, you haven't heard from this person in a week or a day, depending on if if, you, if your relationship is you call every day and you haven't heard from this person, you believe something may be wrong, you call up the police department or the fire department, central dispatch, and what you do is you say, hi, my name is Johnny Jones. I have a concern for John Doe who resides at this house. Well, what would your concern be? Well, he calls me every day. It's 6.30 in the morning. He calls me every day, and I haven't heard from him in two or three days, and I'm very concerned for him. So we would then go to the house and do everything in our power to make contact with that person. Again, if we aren't able to make contact, we ask a neighbor, have you seen this person? Check the mailbox. Has it been emptied? They may be sick of you, but we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that the person is alive and well. That's the point of the well-being program. Um, once we're there, as part of the well-being program, there's a checklist. Now, by no means am I a doctor, nor do I want to play a doctor, even for Halloween. But we're certainly not going to leave the house if we feel that there's further needs that need to be met. In other words, is the person disoriented? Has the person kept clean, et cetera? It's almost the same list that the ER goes through when you first walk in. And if we have a concern, we'll try and contact their PCP or their caretaker or someone to make sure that this isn't the norm. And if it is the norm, then we don't have to do something immediately. But if it isn't the norm, okay, well, what do we have to do? Do we have to call elder services? What is it that we have to do? Now, keep in mind, our primary goal is to keep you in that house. We may ask you to go to the hospital for a checkup, but by no means do we want you to stay there. We want you to get well and come back home. But we, as first responders, can't arrive at your house and discover a condition that your needs aren't being met, especially if they're emergency um, situations. In other words, uh, we've discovered that you haven't left the kitchen in a week because you can't move, or you fired your caretaker and nobody's come to check on you in however long. So that's a well-being check. The next one is um, a neighborhood watch, which I'm just starting to implement now under the crime prevention title that I have. The goal is to go into specific neighborhoods where there's a lot of people um, and discuss how to prevent crimes, what to look for, what suspicious activity. But while we're there, I, I said, why not do a dual role? How many people live next to elders? Okay, well, while I'm speaking to you about suspicious activity, let's talk about the care of your neighbor. When was the last time you saw this woman or male come out of the house? 
Have you seen any guests arriving in the house? Do you know if they're eating? Have you contacted them? These are just all things that I would, I would think Nantucket of all places would be susceptible to. That you would want to know that that neighbor is being cared for. You're not being nosy, but you're just making sure that that person is okay. And I think everyone in the room wants to be able to do that and does do that for your neighbors. Um, but we're, we're implementing that as part of the crime prevention. Not only do we want to know if there's bad guys in the neighborhood or if there's kids spray painting, but we also want to care for each other and make sure that we're all taking care of each other. We want to make sure that everyone is healthy. So the point, the point of these programs, and I'll read it directly so I don't mess it up, when we all work together for the same goal, the community wins. The fact that the chief discovered that there was a need for an elder service officer, um, the fact that the sheriff is involved, the fact that we have the fire department involved, the fact that we have visiting nurses involved, we have all of the key <coughs> players. And the point is, we're not trying to be nosy. The point is, we're not trying to rip you off in any way by selling you these programs, but mine are all free, so I'm not selling anything. <laughs> or at least uh, the sheriff will pay. Exactly, at least the sheriff will pay. The point is, we want to make sure that you are as comfortable as you possibly can <coughs> on a fantastic island that you should be comfortable. And you should be comfortable in your own house with the services that we provide, because a lot of communities don't offer these services that we're providing for you now. And it's important that what we offer is actually expressed to you because these programs are only good as the people on it. And if we don't have anyone on it, the programs aren't going to serve any justice. So that's my spiel. I appreciate the time.